So one of the most prominent features of colonization is the imposition of residential schools, whether that be residential schools or attending as a day student. We see this really commonly across multiple generations, some as many as five, six generations going back. Uh, another uh, common Gladue factor that we will see is amalgamation between two otherwise unrelated First Nations that have had to be amalgamated due to colonial policy. Oftentimes we'll see the impact that that's had on losing their territorial land base and losing their access to their resources, their land, their fisheries and so forth. So we see that poverty really does have its roots, that there may be historical uh, impacts, but those ricochet down the generations and they're ongoing, as well as the intergenerational trauma that comes with that level of poverty, with that kind of impact of um, colonial policy across the whole community as, a, as one. They are unique to Aboriginal populations and they are closely associated with the intergenerational impacts of colonization. They are areas in which uh, we have continued to see deficits for Indigenous populations, specifically in the areas of education, employment, higher levels of mental illness, substance abuse. Uh, and we go deeper than that. We, we speak to the impact uh, that those intergenerational factors have had on communities. Uh, we look at uh, patterns of behavior throughout the generations and we try and trace them back to their source. You know, we look at things like loss of land, loss of culture, uh, the impacts of Indian residential school, and we ask the court to take those mitigating factors into context beyond the, the typical socialization-based mitigating factors that are currently being observed for all people.